Before we get down to the business of fixing email mistakes, let's take a look at what actually makes a good email in the first place. Now by now you should have had a chance to read the exchange between Klaus and Martin and you should have made a list of 10 points uh, about what makes a good email in your opinion. Now don't forget it's not enough just to know these rules. You actually have to practice, practice, and then practice. And that's what this course is about. Doing your assignments, sending them to me, and accepting feedback and suggestions. So let's take a look at my list of 10 points about this email and let's start at the top of the page. Use a helpful subject line. Now Martin wrote a very clear and useful subject line. Uh, the subject line helps the customer know right away that the message is a response to their question. A subject line uh, such as uh, the one in this email, which I got from a uh, pretty big company, is not very helpful. I mean, PL 201602050111 does not tell me what this email is about. Even worse, it made me feel like I was a number instead of a valued and respected client. So keep in mind, unhelpful subject lines get lost in the email uh, box, okay? They get mistaken for spam and deleted. Uh, in this case, the subject line response to your question about Chalford Jacket will get the customer's attention and help solve his problem. Now, you also uh, need to respond quickly. Uh, Gajerek Polska responded very promptly. The email was received at 10.32 and answered that same afternoon at 2.07 p.m. Now, because email messages can be sent instantly, customers expect a fast response. Now, personalize the response. Um, a customer who has taken the time to write an email deserves to be treated as a person. Okay, this email response addresses the customer by name, uh, Dear Mr. Klein. Now, the opening paragraph personalizes the response by repeating information from the customer's email. Uh, this also sounds easy, but let me show you that really bad email again. Now, here the customer service agent didn't even bother to acknowledge if I am a man, woman, or a company. Very unprofessional. And of course, we have to answer the, the uh, customer's questions. Now, Martin answered the first question in the first paragraph and the second question in the fourth paragraph. How is answering the customer's question a trait of excellent customer service email? I mean, shouldn't all customer service emails answer questions? Well, they should, but it's really annoying, you know, when you get a response that sends you back to the website or to a catalog. I mean, most likely uh, you couldn't find the answer there in the first place. Now, we also need to make it possible for the customer to take action. If the customer can or should do something after reading the email, then let's make sure that the email includes all the information needed to take action. In this email, Martin gives Klaus all the information needed to complete the transaction. Okay, Martin answers the question about availability, then tries to solve the problem by suggesting a solution then he explains exactly how to make an exchange using phrases such as we will be happy and we appreciate uh, really contribute to the email's polite, positive, and personal tone. Also, uh, this email is easy to read and understand. Um, take a look at the second paragraph. The sentences are short and concise they are written in active voice, which emphasizes what the customer should do and what the company will do. 
Uh, the email is written in international English, uh, free of confusing idioms, regional expressions, and most phrasal verbs. This makes it easy to understand, even if the customer's native language isn't English. And don't forget to proofread for mechanical errors. Uh, this email response contains no spelling, punctuation, or grammatical errors. Keep in mind that most spell check programs will not catch all of the mistakes uh, that can pop up in a typical uh, email. And uh, here we have the second answer uh, to the customer's question. And finally, uh, very important, uh, make it easy for the customer to contact you. Uh, at the end of the message, Martin included a phone number. Uh, so the customer has a, another way of contacting the company uh, if he has further questions or if the problem isn't solved. Uh, he lets the customer know uh, the service department uh, business hours and gives the correct time zone. And finally, um, we have a very nice closing. We appreciate your business. It makes of course, the email makes it sound even more personal and friendly. And Martin signs his full name and his title. Okay, well, I hope you uh, complete this course uh, and you find it helpful. I look forward to receiving your assignments. Please take the time to do each one carefully uh, before you submit it. Uh, if you have any questions, you can reach me in several ways uh, through the website, uh, either by chat when, uh, during, during office hours or uh, through email uh, or through the course itself. There's all kinds of ways to get in touch. Uh, so I look forward to hearing from you and uh, I hope you make it to the end of the course.